The next morning, Lord Surya rose and illuminated the world. The rays of the sun were falling on the gold cups of the old palaces and doing the magic. A huge elephant decorated with amberi came and stood in front of Kundave Prati's mansion. Kunta and Vanati came out from inside the palace and climbed the platform steps and mounted the elephant. The elephant walked shakily towards Parintaka Kalarathura Road, which was in the middle of the barracks. The elephant boy walked up to it, slowing its pace and taking it away. Hearing the sound of the elephant's bell, the city mandars came out of their houses and rushed out. When they saw the two princesses, they bowed their faces and bowed their hands. Crossing other streets, the elephant reached the part of the city where the army houses were. The appearance of those streets was unique. The fat roosters went looking for each other for a fight. Goats with crooked horns are there any who come to war? They stood looking around. The rosy hounds were tied to the doorposts with skins and bell ropes. Little children were holding bamboo sticks in their hands and playing the silomba with each other. When the silomba ghazis clashed, the sounds of Sada Sada Patapata arose. On the courtyard walls of the houses, various pictorial scenes were painted with saffron lumps. Mostly they depicted the leelas of Lord Muraga and the biographies of the Chola kings. There were a lot of war scenes in them. The scene where Lord Muraga chopped off the heads of Surapatamajara and Durga Parmswari killed Mahayashajara was written very gruesomely. On the walls of the palace, the heroic deeds performed by the Chola soldiers in the battlefields of Teleru, Thanjay, Kudamuku, Arislaru, Tirapurambayam, Valor, Thakolam, Siva etc. When the elephant on which the princesses were riding arrived in the streets of this army house, the only thing turned into stone. Roosters fluttered their feathers and sat on the roof and crowed. The children ran to pick each other up. They knocked on their doors and announced the news to the occupants. When the elephant passed through the streets of the army house, women, children and old people stood at every door saying long live the goddess of youth. Long live the rich daughter of Sundara Chola. They congratulated and rejoiced. Some of them started following the elephant. The crowd kept getting bigger. They expressed their happiness through various greetings. We have already mentioned that the children and parents of the soldiers who had gone to fight in Sri Lanka were living in the army houses at that time. For their welfare Kundave had established a medical road with the proceeds of her own land grants. The custom of honouring their forefathers was very good among Chola clans. The most famous of Kundave's ancestors was the father of her paternal grandfather Parantaka Chakraborty. Kundave Devi established and ran this Parantakara Thurasale as her name suggests. She used to inquire about the welfare of the families of the war veterans, keeping a regular visit to the clinic. The elephant stopped when it came close to the road. First the front legs are folded and then the back legs are also folded and it lies down on the ground. Both the goddesses came down from the top of the elephant. As the elephant moved a little further, a crowd of people, mainly women and children, surrounded the goddess. Isn't a Dura road useful to all of you? Doctors come every day to give medicine to those in need, don't they? Asked the princess. Yes, mother. Yes. Many voices replied. I was suffering from a cough for three months. After taking medicine from the doctor for a week, I was cured. Said a woman. Mother. My son fell on the tree and broke his leg. The doctor bandaged him and gave him medicine for fifteen days. He has recovered. Now he is running and playing. He has started climbing the tree again. Said another woman. My mother's eyesight has been failing for a while. She came to Adura Road for a month and brought medicine. Now her eyesight is fine. Said a young woman. You see, Vanathi. What kind of people were our ancestors who lived in Tamil Nadu? I don't know how they discovered that such and such a disease can be cured with such and such a herb. Said Kundave Prati. They must have discovered such wonderful medicines only by seeing with the wise eye. How else could it be? Vanatha said. It is true that they have invented so many wonderful medicines. But for those who suffer from psychosis like you, they have not found any medicine? 
what to do? Sister. I'm not a psychopath. Please don't say this too often. My girlfriends are constantly pampering me and buying my soul. I wish you well. You have made my brother, who used to live without a care in the world, to be depressed, haven't you? Every time someone comes from Sri Lanka, he sends to ask how your body is. Said I lay aprati. By this time make way for the doctor. Make way for the doctor. The slogan was heard. The guards separated the people who were standing there. The elderly head doctor of Adura Road came and welcomed and entertained the princesses. Physician. Did you not say there were some tall herbs in the woods near Kodakar? Did you send a young warrior to fetch them? Did he come? Kundave asked. Yes, mother. That young child has come. He was brought by Isana Sivabhata. I will send one of my sons with him. My son will return from Kadakare. He says that the hero they sent is also going to the island of Ceylon. We must bring Kudava herb from Sri Lanka. Vanathi asked. Yes, mother. When Anumar brought Sanjeevi Parvatam to save Lakshmana's life, he crossed the sea through Kadakare. Then some herbs from Sanjeevi Mountain fell into Kadakare forest, so good herbs are available there even today. Since there was Sanjeevi Parvatam in Sri Lanka, aren't there more rare herbs? Only the herbs that I look forward to. If I get it, I will surely cure the emperor's disease myself. By God's grace so be it. Now where are those two youths? They're in, mother. They're waiting to take their leave and take their leave in preparation for the journey. The two princesses hurried into the road to be escorted by the chief physician. There they walked in the corridors looking at people who had bought medicine and those who were waiting for medicine. When they all saw Kundave Prathai, their hearts and faces blossomed and they congratulated the princess for providing them with such a good medical path. Two men were waiting in the chief doctor's room. Ilya Prati smiled seeing Nam Vandiyathevan dressed in a new way among them. Vanatic also recognized the hero in a way. With Kundave's ear, sister. The child looks like the one seen in the astrologer's house. She said. Looks like him to me. He's been to the doctor after seeing an astrologer. Like you, he seems to have some kind of mental disorder. After saying that, he looked at Vandiyathevan and asked, Why sir? Are you the one who agreed to go to Sri Lanka to bring herbs for the emperor's health? She asked. Vandiyadeva's eyes and brows spoke some other secret language. He mouthed, Yes, princess. I am going to Ceylon. Perhaps I will see the prince there. Do you have any news for him? He asked. If you see it, you must tell this news. Princess Vanathi of Kajumbalar is not feeling well. She often loses consciousness and faints. If you want to see the princess with self-confidence, you should inform her that she should leave immediately, said Ilayapurathi. That's right, ma'am. Saying that, Vandiyadeva looked at Vanati. On hearing the words of Kundave, Vanatha's sweet face became even more beautiful. Overcoming the raging anger and shyness, Vanatha stuttered and said, Sir, don't say such a thing. I am asking you very much. Vanathi of Kajumbalar, please let me know that I am comfortable by eating four meals a day under the guidance of Ilay Aprati. I'll tell you so, ma'am. Vandiyathevan said. Beautiful. You say I say so and you say I say so what she said? Can either be true. So what, madam? I'll just say what the plaintiff said and what the defendant said. Let the prince be the judge of what is true and what is not. Vandiyathevan said. But don't just change what someone said to someone else. Blessed are you. Vanatha said. Kuntave wanted to stop this speech and said, Doctor. Have you got the leaf to send to these people from the palace Thirumandra officer? She asked. I got it, mother. I got a letter in general saying, they are going to bring herbs to cure the emperor, so all the government officials on the way should help them as they ask for, and a letter for the million and a half lighthouse keeper. 
I gave it to them. Said the doctor. Then why the delay? Should we leave immediately? Said I lay aprati kundave. Yes, must go. Vandiyathevan said. But leaving immediately is not so easy. They exited the medical road and came outside. An Amberi elephant was waiting to carry the royal virgins. Two of the palace horses galloped to a halt, carrying Vandiyadeva and his consort to fly into the air. But Vandiyathevan suddenly had some doubts. Something new and new was emerging to warn the squatters. She mainly warned them about the dangers they might encounter on the way. The princesses mounted the Amberi elephant. Then Vandiyadeva and his consort mounted the horses. The elephant did not appear on the way out. Kundave signalled that those who were going to travel long distances should leave first. Vandiyadeva reluctantly turned his horse around. Once more he looked back at the princess with eager eyes. Then he gave a blow to the horse as if he were angry. That galloping horse leaped on all fours and flew away. The doctor's son had to struggle to follow him. After the elephant started walking back, Kundave was deep in thought. What strange nature is this mind? Why does this mind, which has rejected the Manati kings and Viridi warriors, take so much pains with this young man who came as a wayfarer? Why is he so worried that he should successfully complete the task he accepted and return safely? Sister! What are you thinking? Vanatha's voice brought Kundave to this world. Nothing Vanathi. I was thinking about that young man's arrogant nature. Now it seems that why we sent him a message to my brother. Yes, sister. He is very wicked. He even seems to be a great robber. What is it? What do you call a bandit? Ordinary bandits steal useless things like gold and silver. I am afraid that this youth will rob the clan goddess of the rich Chola country. You won't allow that, will you? Vanatha said. You bastard! Do you think of me like you? Such a thing will never happen! said Kundave. When the elephant turned back and went some distance, they saw many women standing in a crowd on the road. They made the elephant stop and asked, Why are you standing in a crowd? Do you want to say something? Ilaipradi asked Kuntave. One of the women came forward and said, Mother! There is no news about our men in Sri Lanka. Have the Tanjavur people stopped them from sending rice from here? Mother, how can they fight without food? She asked. You needn't worry about that. The grain they need is on its way from the port of Mamalapuram. Whatever the Tanjavur people do, will your prince stand idly by? Will he watch the Chola warriors starve? Said Ile Aprati. On another occasion, Kundave would have gone down there and comforted the women further. Now that her mind was in a different state, she preferred solitude. The elephant headed towards the palace.